Um, Professor Jones, uh, what is the biggest difficulty in reaching uh, the genetic code? And can you describe approximately how fast we can expect to know all of the codes? I think reading the actual genetic code has become very simple. It was once uh, tremendously technical, but now there are machines that you can buy. You take your animal, whatever it is, an elephant or a banana, you grind it up, and you feed the DNA into the machine, and you press the button, and the code comes out of the end. So I think there is no reason why we should not read the genetic code of every creature if we wanted to. We've already looked, read our own genetic code. The depressing thing is that having read those 3,000 million elements of DNA in humans, we've actually learned not very much. We found all the genes, but we don't know what they do. So it's easy to read the code, but it's very hard to understand what it's saying. I think w one of the things which has very much happened with the new ability to read the genetic code is that biology is almost turned into computer science. That's what made it possible to decode to human DNA. When they started, they spent all their money on biochemistry and big technical machines. Then they realized it was much more important to spend their money on computers, and half the people who did the work were computer scientists. Because, of course, any code is itself, um, a computer itself runs on digital codes, as we do. So if we're going to learn anything, it's going to be with computer science, not with biology. Already we have this fantastic ability to take any piece of DNA of whatever it comes from and feed it into the freely available computer database which anybody can access and compare it with millions of other genes from throughout the living world and we find that our genes might be the same as a gene in a worm or a gene in a fly and then you can work out what a human gene does from looking at a, at a fly or a worm and that's entirely due to advances in computer science so biology and computing have really become the same thing um, so, next question, uh, why is it so difficult to get control of viral diseases? Um, because um, the virus has just few codes. It is difficult to get control of some viral diseases. We've had some success with some. Um, there are viruses have been controlled by drugs like Zovirax, which actually interfere with viral genes. Um, the problem is, with many of these viral diseases, we don't fully understand how they work. I mean, the classic ones are things like influenza and HIV. They hijack, they take advantage of our own cells, and they do it in a very ingenious way. And actually, the problem is we have to control, once they've taken control of our cells, we then have to control our own cells. Now, that actually is rather difficult. So, viral diseases have proved harder to control than bacterial diseases have, but I think we should be able to do it someday. You tend to forget that we're living in a quite unique period of human health and happiness. You know, the mere fact that somebody of my age, which is 59, is still alive would have been almost unheard of. 200 years ago. So we've done very, very well. Um, whether we can continue to do very, very well is another question. I think uh, certainly we face problems with things like HIV and with um, SARS and with, uh, with other illnesses. Uh, tuberculosis is another one which is emerging again, although it's a bacterium rather than a virus. We face these problems, but we faced these problems in the past and we've defeated them. So I'm more of an optimist. I think that with the help of science, we'll defeat these two. A single misspelling in DNA segment can make a protein manifestation, which in turn may cause disease. Can we treat this process as a new biological weapon? Well, can we use genetics to develop biological weapons? There's been talk about this. Um, for example, let me think of an example. Um, it is the case that many people of Middle Eastern origin are um, very susceptible to a particular drug that's called primaquine, which is used to, was once used to um, treat malaria. And there's been an argument that if you poison the water supply of Baghdad with this stuff, it'll kill all the natives and leave all the invading troops untouched. Well, first of all, that would be a, you know, that would be a terrible thing to do. But secondly, of course, it's much easier to drop a bomb on Baghdad before you invade it and kill people with physics rather than biology. So I don't really think these genetically targeted weapons, which have been talked about, are really sensible. Having said that, of course, there's no reason at all why you shouldn't be able to make bioweapons in which you insert uh, the poisons of particular illnesses 
into bacteria and you spray the population with it. That's easy to do. We have in my laboratory, we have fruit flies which have little bits of the human diphtheria gene inserted into them. That's a very, very nasty disease. So that would be easy to do, but it would still be easier to drop a bomb um, filled with dynamite. So I am very much against biological weapons, but the reason they're not used is not that the Americans are nice people, or the Russians are nice people, or the Chinese are nice people. Um, it's because they work less well than conventional weapons. Would it be possible in the future, of course, uh, to exchange the genes between people? I think we do it already, and I think it's called sex. Um, uh, <laughs> yes, we do it. I mean, nature's a wonderful thing. Um, yes, we do it uh, as a standard pastime. That's what sexual reproduction is all about. Um, if you ask, is it in the future going to be possible to replace a piece of damaged DNA by cutting it out and replace and restoring it with a new piece of sort of molecular surgery? I think it ought to be possible. And 30 years ago, people thought it would be easy, but it's turned out to be extremely difficult. Um, we've now learned a lot more about our genes, and the more we learn, the more difficult it looks. Um, so I don't think it's going to happen soon. I think, however, that although genetic surgery may take a long time, genetic medicine, which is treating the products of genes, may happen much more quickly. There's a, a new field now which is very active, which is called RNA genetics. Now, genes are made of DNA. They make a product called RNA, which makes proteins. And it turns out that we can actually interfere with that process of their making proteins by making um, our own RNA and feeding it to the creature, which stops it making its uh, correct RNA. And in that way, you can block the action of certain genes. Now, that may turn out to be very helpful, for example, in cancer, which is due to particular genes going wrong, becoming too active. If you can block them, this may be a new era of cancer treatment. So maybe in the end, genetics will just become part of conventional medicine. It won't be anything dramatic and new, and I hope that it does. So if you mean uh, sex is for exchanging <laughs> genes, uh, maybe we can prepare a good book, how to exchange the genes uh, to go the best way in marriage. I, I think it's called Playboy. I think it exists already. <laughs> um, you, well, I don't know. There are, there are all kinds of advice manuals about how to choose your partner and so on. I'm a great believer in what I call the healing power of lust people will choose, choose their partners the way they always have done. Um, and I don't really think genetics has got much of a place in the bedroom, really. Okay, Professor Jones, um, because uh, ATVN, Academic Internet Television Network, is a platform for scientists to exchange the knowledge, to exchange uh, the achievements, uh, how we can ca help uh, in genetics or biology or mean, how we can be in help? I mean, how can ATVN be in help? Uh, or the media in general? Uh, not media in general. We are internet television. Yeah. So uh, this is a good platform to exchange the knowledge because we are going around the world. So uh, I, I think the most give us some advices. Uh, I think the most important thing about genetics is that people must realize how little it can do. Um, I, I think among educated audiences that's already happening. But I'm constantly asked, all geneticists ask, are asked, when are we going to be able to improve the IQ of our children or the beauty of our children by inserting genes? When are we going to start cloning human beings? And the answer is, first of all, we don't know. And secondly, for both those things, it's going to be much, much, much more difficult than most people imagine. It may never happen. So my feeling about people who transmit information about genetics is that they should be telling their audience to get real understand how little genetics has done. Genetics has achieved almost nothing to improve human health. It's done a lot to improve food production, that's for sure. It's done effectively nothing to improve uh, cancer control, infectious disease, and it doesn't show much sign of doing it yet. Maybe it will in the future, but the motto of genetics should be not yet. So, uh, which topics are the most important to produce the programs? I think the most important thing that genetics has told us is that the environment is far more central to our lives than we ever thought. What genetics will do and is doing will tell individual people what is most risky for them in the environment. As I often say, 
if everybody smoked, lung cancer would be a genetic disease. Because in order to get lung cancer, which is a horrible disease, first of all, you must smoke, which is a very stupid thing to do. And secondly, if you have a particular gene, you will certainly get the disease. So, ironically, the more we learn about genes, the more central public health, of the old-fashioned kind, about not eating um, malbouf, bad food, about not, uh, not smoking, not drinking to excess, the more important that seems. So maybe genetics is making us much more conventional than we used to be. It's old tech, not new tech. Thank you very much. Right, thank you. Must be time for lunch. <laughs> right, good. <laughs>